Hello, welcome to episode 57 of the Epic Film Challenge 2, A Thousand More Movies You Must See Before You Die, 1937's Make Way for Tomorrow. Holy moly, um, Orson Welles, the great Orson Welles, is once quoted as saying that this is kind of the saddest picture ever made. Uh, obviously he made that quote a long time ago, but he also said that it's, uh, it's a film that can make a stone cry. Um, and it is a sad film. But it's a brilliant one as well. Um, I, I had no real expectations to it. I later learned that um, uh, Ozu had uh, gained inspiration from it to make Tokyo Story, which is one of my favorite films. And I could totally see where he gained inspiration from it. It's a little bit different, but it's the same sort of theme, uh, but done in a very different way because it's set in Japan, obviously. And we will be talking about that at some point in this series. But make way for tomorrow. Um, which is made well before Tokyo Story, uh, and obviously, uh, well not obviously, but it is an American film, it's set in America, and so it's American characters, it's quite different, but uh, having seen Tokyo Story first, it was interesting to see this, um, and I don't think that the comparison hurts either of the films, uh, just, you know, for the record, seeing as I brought them both up, but Make Way for Tomorrow um, is about this elderly couple who uh, are facing eviction, basically. Um, they, they kind of haven't really dealt with their money that well, and so the bank is going to take their house, and, you know, they're, they're not working, they're too old, and, and what have they got to do? They call all of their kids to the house, their kids are living all over the, the U.S. at this point, and they tell them what's happening, and the kids are like, well, well, I can't take you, you know, you can't live with us, you know, we haven't got the room. Well, we can't take you either. And they decide, well, I can take one of you, and maybe she can take one of you, you know, but we can't take both of you, there's no room. So basically this elderly couple, they get split up. And I just had to stop the video to actually look up the, the actors' names. Victor Moore and Beulah Bondi play the elderly couple. I, I just had to give these actors a name check because they were both phenomenal. Um, I just loved their relationship together, even though that they're, they're apart for most of the film. It was such a sweetly portrayed thing, and I, I you know, it's one of those things. That you actually, even with Tokyo Story, when I watched Tokyo Story, I was like, "That's a real couple on screen. They, they've just got a, a married couple to do this." And I, I almost felt like this way of Make Way for Tomorrow. Their relationship was so convincing. Uh, but you know, you you do get to see them on their own a lot because they get split up and they go to different sides of the country. And it's really about how their kids don't really care about them that much anymore. They care about them, they love them, but they haven't got time for them. You know, they haven't got time to, to help them the way that they helped their children, you know. And it's a very sobering tale, um, and, and there's a lot of dignity at play there from, from the two characters who have to kind of deal with their children, kind of seeing them as nuisances more than, you know, anything else. And it's just heartbreaking. It's so heartbreaking. I mean, there's there's... It's just littered with great scenes, um, and Beulah Bondi in particular, who plays the, the woman, the elderly woman, she was just phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. And I learned that she was a lot younger than she appears. Like I think they must have done some makeup, because she really seemed to me like she was really old in this film. But she went on to, to keep acting for many years, I was like, how, how old is she? Uh, whereas Victor Moore, I believe, was a bit more closer to the character's age, um, but he definitely kind of played up the, the el elderliness as well. But Beulah Bondi was just um, sensational. I just I thought her performance was really affecting to me. Just a quietly sad, but kind of almost under the surface fiery performance. Like I just I loved the way she portrayed her character and the way that she reacted to everything that happened to her throughout the film. Um, and I I just adored the ending as well. Um, and to me, the ending is like the last third of the film. And I don't think it's spoiling much to say that uh, they kind of get reunited again, but their future is uncertain. And so they have this kind of, this, this day together. And at the end of the day, you know, a change has to be made. And it's almost like, is this going to be their last kind of hurrah together? And they go out and, and I just love that whole thing. It, it, was, it was beautiful. It was really, really beautiful. Um, and it was hard not to roll a tear by the time the film had ended. Uh, and I'm not going to spoil how it ends, but I just thought that it was, it was perfect. Um, a sad story, but you know, just just one I felt like needed to be told, because uh, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, you know, at least a few people have watched this film since it was released back in 1937, and have thought, oh God, you know, I really should appreciate my parents while I have them. Um, in fact, I, I I can't imagine there being, you know, there must be tens of thousands of people who felt like that. I felt a little bit like that, and I don't I don't neglect any time I spend with my parents, but. 
I even felt like, oh man, maybe I should even, you know, I should appreciate them even more, you know. So, um, Make Way for Tomorrow, phenomenal film, absolutely loved it, directed by Leo McCary, first of his films I've seen, but man, I, I just thought it was it was tender, beautiful, um, funny at times as well, there's, there's humour there, the cast is great, the supporting cast I thought did a brilliant job. There's a great scene where um, uh, the, the man, uh, played by Victor... What's his name again? Victor Moore. Yeah, I, I just hadn't memorized their names, but Victor Moore, um, I mean, he was great too, you know, but I definitely feel like Beulah Bondi stole the show here. Um, but yeah, there's a great scene where he um, he goes to um, this this kind of shop where he's living when they get separated, and there's this kind of Jewish, old Jewish guy who runs the shop, and he was a brilliant actor, and there's a great scene where they just sit down talking to each other, and he reads a letter from, you know, his wife from Beulah Bondi, and I thought that scene was just phenomenal. Um, just, yeah. I mean, Make Way for Tomorrow, I absolutely loved it. Could talk about it for a lot longer, but I feel like you just need to see it. And <laughs> is it a film you'll see before you die? Absolutely. Just just do anything you can to, to buy this film, rent this film, watch it on YouTube. It needs to be seen. I think it's it's, it's one of the great films. Honestly, uh, I'd put it up there probably in like maybe the 100 greatest films ever made, I think, because its message is so strong. It's delivered so efficiently. You know, it's only about an hour and a half, and it just does everything that a, a powerful drama with a little bit of humor in there to kind of give it a little bit of levity at the same time um, can do. So there we go. Thank you for watching.